Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Khalil Stemler. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to finally be here. Uh, two times delayed, I think. But, but finally. worth the wait. Uh, I am I am super pumped for this. I think this is this is going to be a fun one. I uh, I actually look look what I have. I Ooh, have my <laughs> dang! <laughs> this is nice. from uh, I I spoke at the GraphQL Summit um, a couple times, and and this was. This is what the piece of swag that I got. I'll make sure I turn the logo out so that when I drink, I'll like very carefully look, oh, look, look at that. <laughs> yeah, we can both do that. Uh, real, real classy right here. Mm. Mm, look at that. Yeah, we're not we're not brand stuffing at all. Look, like this is. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that felt great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So so um, I think Apollo is like a, a very interesting company because it it sort of like it. Feels to a certain extent like Apollo kind of single-handedly dragged GraphQL into the mainstream, um, which I think is really exciting because, like, you know, Facebook was doing GraphQL and mm. they had Relay, and it was like it is super powerful. Like, and Relay Modern is super cool, um, yeah. but it sort of always felt like Relay was like for Facebook, and and it felt like GraphQL was for Facebook. And, and then we started to see Apollo show up and, and it was really interesting because it was kind of like, okay, here we go. Like now we've got stuff that feels like it's for apps, like for developers and not yeah. purpose built for, for Facebook. Um, how have you like, I mean, you're, you're, you've been there for how long now? I think now it's been around like eight months or so. Nice. How, and, how are you liking it? Oh my God. It's just like the best job in the world. Like I get to, like, I was already spending time like blogging and helping developers and now I get paid for it. It's like, how is this, <laughs> this is a real job? I don't understand sometimes. It's just so much fun. <laughs> I, I spend a lot of time sitting and wondering like, how did my job end up that I'm the host of an internet TV show? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll it's, take it. It's crazy. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I'm I'm not complaining one bit. Yeah, but yeah. Like um, when I when I first heard about uh, uh, Apollo, you know, I had no idea that they were actually Meteor uh, before mm -hmm. they were Apollo, mm -hmm. and it was almost like uh, you know, like a Darren Aronofsky moment, like a, like my mind just like just exploded mm -hmm. when uh, they told me that you know these guys from Meteor saw that GraphQL was this thing that was, you know, um, like had a lot of potential. And then they shifted off of Meteor and then they started on this Apollo project and it is right. what it is now. And it's just, holy smokes, like, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I only learned that in my interview and I was just kind of like blown away by that. So, yeah. So my, my introduction to, um, to Apollo was back when I was at IBM and we, uh, we ended up adopting Apollo server and Apollo client in production on IBM Cloud's uh, front-end microservices. And uh, and it ended up being this really cool thing. So I, I I ended up building like a microservices abstraction for it because I needed a way to, to let teams control their schemas. This was before things like schema federation existed. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was actually how I ended up on stage at the, the GraphQL summit was was talking about this tool that, that we had built at IBM. Um, oh, nice, nice. You shut up, Slack. How dare you? <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> so anyways, uh, but, but so what we ended up doing was, um, we like, it, it was such an interesting thing to do because this was, this was early days, right? Like this was mm. Apollo client V1. This was, um, before any of the, like, there wasn't a lot of like enterprisey adoption. And so a lot of the tooling was home rolled. People were inventing stuff. You didn't have things like air handling or or really good yeah. log management. It was like, okay, let's see if you can make this work. Um, so I am so, so, so excited to see how far we've come since V1 because that was the last time that I really worked with it closely. Oh, really? Yeah, like I, I just, you know, I did all that stuff at IBM and then I went over to Gatsby and Gatsby's got its own GraphQL imp implementation, right? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I, I've done some stuff with Apollo and I do, like it's always been my, like it's the thing I've re reached for when I needed yeah. a, a GraphQL client, but so much of what I've done now has gone to static like pre-rendering. 
which mm -hmm. doesn't use a, a client GraphQL runtime. Um, so, but now that I'm back at Netlify, it's like, okay, well, how do we make more appy stuff? Like, you know, pre-rendering is dope. It's what we should what we should reach for first. Mm -hmm. But then I want to take that next step. I want people to be able to interact with my apps. I want I want to go, you know, because like Jamstack can do that. You can take a Jamstack app and make it fully dynamic, fully interactive. But how? Like, how do we do that? How can we use Apollo to do that? So um, that's what you're going to teach us today, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's some like new stuff in Apollo Client 3. Uh, especially like uh, around local state management. Mm -hmm. um, that just really is just awesome because before we had to do some, some other stuff with, I think like local resolvers and, you know, me, like I just entered this entire Apollo client uh, space, I'm going to say eight months ago. So I kind of got the opportunity to learn it and see what I didn't like. And then at the end of it now, we're just about to launch this new release and then, there's things that I actually do like in this now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a question about suspense for Apollo client. I mean, is suspense even out in React yet? I'm not sure, but I do know that the uh, Apollo client team, they said they have it on the list to think about for their uh, their next sprint after nice. AC3. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, is there anything that we want to talk about before we dive in? Or should we just dive in? Um, well, we can kind of, uh, I think we could just kind of dive in here. We have a to-dos uh, to -dos API that I put together that we can uh, use to build something. Awesome. All right, let me switch into pairing mode. Let's jump over here. Wow, and that now... animation. <laughs> Thank you. Dang. I, I, uh, I made that. <laughs> um in after effects after watching like i was like c c we've been inside for a long time now right this is like yeah. month two of of quarantine and and stuff like that so i was like i can't like i can't keep just working all the time because i'm gonna i'm gonna go off the deep end right i, I don't want to yeah. overwork or, or like grind myself into the ground but also i can't go outside so pretty much my only entertainment is the computer so i was like let's learn after effects <laughs> ah, very nice keep him busy that's a great way to do it yeah yeah exactly yeah. um but yeah so so here we are this is uh this is a a repo that khalil put together for us um that is that i like i'm i'm looking at this more or less for the first time i i look i saw it like 15 minutes ago um this also uh, was created about an hour ago. This, uh, this thing here, so <laughs> that's the way we like to do it here. Is like let's fly by the seat of our pants. So um, yeah. So if if we are going to do this, do I need to clone anything, or do you want to do you want to build this fresh? So I think what we want to do is we just want to get the server portion of this. Okay. We just want kind of uh, some sort of local API that we can play around with. Got so, it. Yeah, let's let's clone that. Clone. Uh, we'll go into here, and then I'm going to open this up. I think I have another repo open, so let me close that. Is that everything? I got this one open too. Get this out of here. That's a that's a tutorial for another day. Um, all mm -hmm. right, so let's uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. We have a server. So can I just empty the client? We'll start with a new one. We can definitely do that, yeah. Get out of here. All right. So I'm going to get rid of the client folder altogether, and I have a server. And yeah, the server... Oh, well, there's a... There's a, Okay, walk me through this. What, uh, what are we looking at here? So this is a basic... Uh, this is probably the most simple Apollo GraphQL um, Apollo server uh, instance I could make here. And so what, what we have here is a, a to-dos app Mm -hmm. uh, a to-dos API, um, and it works with, uh, we've got, yeah, it's running on TypeScript, of course, and uh, it's just a very simple uh, to-dos API that we can use to cool. build on top of. Nice. And so you're using a couple things that I haven't, I, that I've heard of, but I've never used, like GraphQL. Ah, code yes. Gen. Right. Yeah, I love this tool. Um, so GraphQL code gen is a way that we can, um, we could build types for our resolvers by, I think this one works by, I always get confused if it works by looking at our, at our schema or yes. So this one works by looking at our schema and it creates 
uh, it generates types for us. Okay. So, and is, is it this schema or this looks like generated? That was generated, yes. Okay. So I think the way that this thing works is uh, when we install it, there's this really nice command line utility that asks you, hey, how do you want to you know, put this thing together? Okay. Do you want it to look at your schema or do you want to... Uh, and so yeah, do I... Like do I just want to run like npm install? Do I need to run anything else to, to get it rolling? Nope, we can just npm install this and then uh, npm run start. Nice. And we should get a server up and going. So while we're, while we're waiting for this, uh, what's up, Chad? I see Kurt is in here. Good to see you. Um, I see, Kurt. see some regulars. What's up, Alipixel, Max, um, Gators, oh, Musha, Tony. What up, Tony? Um, Good to see y'all. I am very excited to dive in today. And um, is Kurt, are, are you working with Kurt now? I am working with Kurt. We got, we got, uh, see Kurt's got the green hair going now too. Uh, what? It's a rite of passage. Wait, wait, hold on. There's, there's, there's green hair on Kurt? There's green hair on Kurt now, yeah. Oh no. Okay, I gotta go look. Is it on Twitter? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Kemple? That's not right. Nope, that's Katie Kemple. Where are you at, Kurt? There he is. Look at that. I, oh, that <laughs> looked, oh, I like it. I like it. That's good. Yeah. Oh, man. OK, go follow Kurt. He's great. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Kurt also, I think, just got off of a stream doing a, a live viewing party of the uh, the Max Stoiber mini documentary, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've been watching. Kurt's stream kind of evolve and, and grow. And it's been really, really fun to watch him uh, get more serious about that, which, uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I like Kurt. He's great. Um, He's awesome. Um, right. I, I, when I first uh, like met Kurt, you know, even when he was just joining the company, he provided so much like uh, so, so much advice and so much insight, like into just developer experience. Cause it's, mm -hmm. Such a such a confusing new fresh space, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I just yeah, it's been great working with him. Really great guy too. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I used to work with Kurt back at Gatsby. Um, we were both there. Oh, really? Yeah, we we were both there uh, fairly briefly, but it was uh, it was a good time. I like it. It's, it was it was a lot of fun to be able to sit in a room and like talk about things with someone who um, who thinks on that level. Like I, I like it when people are very community minded. I like it when people think about not just like how cool is my tech but like what does my tech unlock for people and mm. and thinking about it that way is, has always been such a um it, it helps like reframe everything right because if you're not thinking about like what cool thing can i build and you're instead thinking about like how can i help somebody get to the next level like how do i how do i remove a barrier to let somebody right. go one step further in their career it it changes yeah. the way you write code right and i, I think that's really um that, that's a it's a powerful way to frame things you're absolutely right it's like it's like uh thinking with it's just putting empathy at the forefront of everything i think right absolutely yeah um well cool so all right so i've got this server uh if i want to start this i will look here i guess and i'll just run it yeah let's do npm run start it's ready yeah. That's the wrong browser. All right, let's go to localhost uh, 4000. All right. So that looks like not the same. That looks like something stored from a previous yeah. session. So let's look at the docs. All right, so we've got a schema. Mm -hmm. um, our schema looks like it's going through. This actually has a lot. I'm going to look at the docs instead. So we've got to dos. Right. So I can create to-dos, and I can read to-dos. Clear, delete, Clear edit. Out. Perfect. So Some did, you, on to -dos. did you uh, have to write this whole thing, or, or did the, the code gen do that for you? Oh, yeah. So I wrote this, I wrote this schema here. Uh -huh. um, and I, I got a little bit opinionated with the way I put this together. You can see there's things in there like unions and uh, errors and whatnot. But okay. I wrote this myself, okay. and then what the GraphQL code gen does is um, it looks at your schema, and then it will build the types for it. Okay. 
And so we end up with this, I believe, generated generated set of types. And so this yeah. is this is going to give us like autocomplete, right? Yeah, definitely. So when we're resolving some of this stuff, uh, we can use those generated types. Very cool. OK. Um, we have a question. We do have a question. So as uh, as a refresher, are unions in GraphQL uh, equivalent to the relationships in a relational DB? I don't actually know the answer to that. No, um, unions are more similar to like uh, if you want to say um, it's it's a it's a opera. It's almost like a logical um, mm. uh, like operator. It's this has to be. Uh, one of these two types. Gotcha. So, so if you oh, look at so it's, it's almost like a drop-down selector. If you if you think in UIs like I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't think in UIs like you do, but yes, you could say that. So if we go to the uh, let's actually check it out real quick in schema.ts. Oh, in schema.ts. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this one. Yeah. So all oh, right. So there we have like for example, edit to do result. What are some of the different results we can get for if we tried to perform an edit to do mutation? Well, two of the different things that might happen are we can get a to do not found error, or we can get a to do validation error. Mm -hmm. And so how do we, because an error, if we want to strictly type that, we want to say, well, it's, it's going to be one of these things or none of them. How can we represent that? How can we make sure that there's there's no invalid state. So we, we force the client to actually work with this error. And unions are a way to force the client side to actually accommodate for and work gotcha. with errors that might actually happen in the real world instead okay. of just throwing an error and, and, or returning a string. Nice. Okay. And, and it looks like I get it. I, I get what's happening. So the, the error is like ultimately it's, it's a message. But by having a type, it gives us more information about what like what is happening. I like that. Exactly. Okay. That, that makes a, that makes a ton of sense. I get it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have a server it's running. It looks like I can, uh, let's, let's just do something real quick. I'm going to add a to do. Okay. So I want to add a to do and I've got all this wonderful autocomplete here. Mm -hmm. Um, so like bless set up to do server. Okay, and then when, what's going to come back is like a success and an error. So let's just see. I think that would be message. Good. And then I can run it. And I got a success. I did not get an error. And so now over here, I can read my to do's. So let's just get all of them and see what it gives me. I want my text and whether or not yep. it's completed. Perfect. Okay. And then if Ooh. I want to mark it done, because we totally did that. We yep. can uh, edit to do, and then I'm going to get the, let me get the ID. And stuff. Oh, we could do, uh, I think it's complete, a completed to do is what? actually the mutation. Oh, that right, is beautiful. Okay. So let me get my ID. My ID is four. Yep. So I'm going to set that. And then I'm going to get back a success or an error with a message or not. Do I have to like spread on this? Um, let me just check real quick. I don't think you do. Unless this one, unless I actually forgot to do the, the types on that one. Inline fragment. Yeah, I'll just leave the error out because I know it's going to work. <laughs> then when we come back here. Yeah. This is. False. If I run the query again, now it's true. Okay, so we've got a working GraphQL Last. server for our to-do app. That's dope. Um, yes, I do have to spread. So I, yeah, I would need to do like a, on. Oh right, error right, or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, um, and that's how we handle that on the other side. Got it. And then, would I need to do that for every possible error type, or is it like, can you do like an on all kind of thing? I don't think you could do an on all. I think you have to. Can you can you do it for? For all of them, uh, it looks Kurt? like I'm not sure. Kurt's saying no. We have to spread on each one. That's yeah. So that's maybe a potential like trade off of. So we get more information using union types, but we also mm -hmm. have to do a little more work to query against union types. Yeah, I, I th and uh, I think that's a an interesting trade off. Um, there is a really cool talk by this developer Scott 
I'm going to butcher his last name, Walshrin. Not really sure how to say his last name, but he wrote a book on like functional domain modeling. And okay. um, one of his things is always try to make, um, uh, un- or always try to represent states that, you know, could possibly happen. Never leave anything up to, um, to strings or uninterpretation. Always try to be as explicit as possible. So yes, this really does force the client to deal with it, but the alternative is uh, we don't force the client to deal with it, and then they don't. We can get into the scenarios where we don't really actually know what we're what we're dealing with, what what this error is right now. Yeah, and and so while while you were explaining that, I just kind of this is the code that you would need to, yes. to query that. So you you don't actually need this, and we can see an error because I've already completed this, right? So we're getting back the error that we already already completed it. Yeah. And that comes from this one. Um, but if I tried to complete to do number five, which doesn't exist, we would get to do not found. So if we needed to check, like we could do a check on the name and get to do not found error. Or if I go back to this one, we get already completed. So like it, it this, um, there, uh, Kurt saying that it pairs well with X state. And if you like, there's another episode on on X state if you want to actually there's a couple on on uh, on X state on learn with Jason if you're if you're interested in learning more um, state machines so there's this one and then there's another one where we had David on which was very cool so this is like an intro to um, mm-hmm. to state machines with David Korshid and this is one where I just solo tried to build a state machine for myself that nice. one is uh, a little more like floundery, <laughs> but we did get there and it was kind of cool. So, um, so anyways, um, this, this model would be kind of nice for, for X state because we'd have like very clear mapping of like error to state in the state machine and, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Okay. So we, uh, we've got a, uh, we've got a server running. We Last. have verified that we can add to do's, read to do's, complete to do's. All that, so that's that's working. That's what we want. Yep. So if we want to use this in a client, mm-hmm. what do we do next? This is so. This is where we're actually going to get into kind of the goal of this episode. We're going to start using <laughs> Apollo Client V3. Yeah. Well, we can we can just get a. What's your preferred way of getting a React app up and running? Create React, um, React app. We can we can create React app. I uh, I don't know that I've used it in a while, but so let's go. I'm going to make a dir called client. And then I'm going to npx create react app. Is it here? It'll just do it. I think. I th- hope so. Find out. <laughs> It'll blow up your whole. Oh, I put it in the server. It's okay. We'll move it. Yep, I screwed it up. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, did I put the client here? Right. Okay, so I'm going to move that out. Move out into client, and then we'll just run that again. And I think that'll put it in this folder without uh, without nice. further issues. Potato React, yeah, I <laughs> yes, React, React is indeed. Uh, did you see Maggie Appleton gave a talk at Women of React where she was talking about visual metaphors and and she did a uh, a drawing of Ra- React as a potato plant, and so there's oh, been no. a whole lot of like potato JS jokes for the last few days. <laughs> it's uh, it's Excellent. really good. Let's let. Actually, I think we can find it. Um, same women of React. Uh, where did that? There's a link to it. I know. I know Joel wrote about this uh, on his blog. So let me here, and then he oh boy. the video down here. That's what we want. This is the link that we want. Um, so let's. Oh. Hello. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> so now I have create React app. We've got a we've got a new app up and running. And if Apps I up. actually start it, I think that will be everything's opening in the wrong window for me today. Here, there we go. We've got a we've got a React app. Nice. All right. So now we can Apolloify this. 
Yes, let's apollo let's it. apollo this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can do uh, we could do a fresh NPM run uh, NPM install uh, Apollo. It's at Apollo slash client. Okay, and um, I think we could do an at latest to get the uh, the freshest freshest uh, slice of Apollo client. So I'm just going to install that into the dependencies of our client. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, I think this is a this is a new thing actually. Of um, Apollo is 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 now all of these dependencies that we need they're all packaged under Apollo slash client. I think. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. I don't need anything else. No, that's that's everything now that we need Whoa, is, is now in this. That's dope, because I, I, I remember the last time that I was trying to put something together, I was using, I think, Apollo Boost. Mm -hmm. But then when I was using Apollo Boost, I had to swap something out. So I was like importing a link, but then I yeah. needed something else to get the link to work. So it was like, yeah. I got there, you know, the docs are the docs are good. They walk you through everything, but it was it felt like there was a, a lot of like, well, this leads to this leads to this. So that's super exciting that it's all in one place now. Yeah, yeah. I think that is that is one of the newest, uh, one of the exciting things about uh, Apollo Client 3. And it was nice for me starting out because I never had to go through that pain. <laughs> kind of reminds me of like... <laughs> you didn't have to live through the before times. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, people are using Webpack and I'm just like, you don't remember what it was like, do you? <laughs> you remember those days oh god good 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 um yeah so all right so now i have i've got apollo client mm -hmm. okay so then we can go ahead and uh let's let's get an instance of this up so maybe let's see in which file should we choose what's in this index.js what's in there i think the index just loads the app okay so i think if we go into app we can work here, right? Or I guess if we need to wrap it, we can put it in the index. Yeah, let's go to the index and let's create an instance of uh, an Apollo client. Yes, so, let's do it. So I believe, do we get type completion in in uh in like JS files in in here? I'm think, almost always using. I TypeScript. think so. So if we type Apollo client, like what would happen? I. Uh, I think it depends on the context. So if I do like client equals, is it new Apollo client or like? Okay, so we have to, yeah, it is. It is a a new Apollo client. So it looks like we have to import it. So let's do an import, uh, import open braces, oh. and then we could do, yep, Apollo client from at. Apollo okay. Client. Boom, and then we can create a new client with. Const client equals new Apollo client. Oh, you know what it is? It's um, I've turned off a lot of auto completion in this instance of VS Code because it gets oh, a yeah. little noisy and and kind of confusing when you're trying to live code. Mm. Uh, so we're probably not going to get a lot of the the auto completion benefits that you would get out of the box um, today right. because I've intentionally made that not work. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So this is good. We have all right. So we have our Apollo client here. Uh, so some of the things we need to pass in here usually are, um, well, one, there's the URI that's going to point to our server. So that mm -hmm. would be at, uh, HTTP localhost 4,000. Localhost 4,000. And I need to start that again. So let me get Boom. into the server and we'll do an NPM run start. Mm-hmm. Okay. So our server's running again. Server's up. Boop. Boom. Yep. And oh, then, hey, thank uh, you, Ace, for the sub. I really appreciate that. Um, does it, also, I does don't it know do why a boop my, when you... Uh, the, if you use the boop emote, it will um, it will play on the... Like, it, it will drop from the, the top. I don't know. <laughs> something's going on where it's not playing sounds today. Can somebody run a sound effect to make sure that's working? That part works at least, so that's good. 
<laughs> Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> um, so, so last time we had, uh, we were able to completely bury the screen in sound effects. And, oh my gosh. Yeah, or in, in boops. Um, let's see if we can run like... You just got blitz. Oh no, my sounds are dead today. That's a bummer. I'll have to figure out what's going on. Or maybe, I don't know if y'all can hear it. Uh, Holy smokes. Oh yeah, we're we're in full chaos mode. Okay, <laughs> all right, so everybody, so uh, you and I, for whatever reason, aren't hearing sound effects today, but the sound effects are playing to the chat. So oh, okay. uh, this actually adds a really fun dynamic because now when the chat tries to troll us, they're only trolling themselves. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, so. Advanced tactic. <laughs> That's an advanced tactic right there. Um, okay, so I've got the URI. So our, our client is now pointing to the server that we created for our to-do app. Yes, uh, right. What next? So now we have to connect a cache instance. Okay. Um, so I believe what we could do here is we can, I think we could, I wonder if we should do this right now. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's do it right now. So let's say cache Okay. there and then, um, yeah, let's let's say cache and then actually no, you know what? I'm changing my mind. Let's let's make a new file. Cause we I I normally like to put the cache in an, in another file and then just pass it over here. Okay. And should I like group this under uh like an Apollo folder or how do you usually do this? Uh I normally just say cache.ts or js right here. Okay. Um and then do I need to import is there like a cache? Yes, thing. there is. There's the in-memory cache from Apollo client. So in-memory cache. Okay. That's it. And then we'll create a new instance of this. Well, is it just like cache like this? Mm-hmm. Equals new in-memory cache. Do I pass anything into it? We can, but we won't pass anything in just yet. Okay. And then let's export this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Uh, I think I read somewhere that that named named exports are going to be easier for interop, so I'm trying to get in that habit. Yeah. Um, and then I can import cache from cache, but I need to make that a relative import. Yes. And then yes. Uh, now we can just drop that in here, and it'll just work. Um, yep. Okay. Do we need anything else? Nope. So now we have an instance of the Apollo client up and running. Uh, we can test this, I believe. If we say, we could, we could actually probably test a query in line. So maybe let's do its client dot query, and then we can let me pass it like an inline query. Okay. And do I just like is it in ticks or do I need the GQL tag or something like that? Um, I'm actually trying to remember this API here. I think it's, we should check the docs real quick. So it's options. Uh, okay, so then we pass it a, uh, an object. Object? Yep. Okay. And then Inside of that object, we'll have a query, and then okay. yeah, we'll we'll need GQL, and we could get that from uh, Apollo Client. It's also packaged in there. Nice. That then, is yeah, we'll... that really is handy because uh, it just eliminates that that question. Like you don't have to you don't have to do it. And then this is my favorite part of GraphQL is I can come out here and I can <laughs> just copy paste. Yep. So good. Um, I, I I cannot overstate how valuable that is from a like a rapid development standpoint. It just like it, it changes the game. Um, yeah, and that will be a promise, I believe, right? Yeah. So it's yes. gonna give me a dot then. Yeah. Then I'll get a result, and then should I just like console log this? You think? Yeah, that'll give you something with. Uh, it'll have data on it. It'll have errors loading so yeah we could just console log the whole thing all right let's do it so i'm going to do that and then i will oops start this thing up again so uh, i'm in the client npm run start and then i'm going to jump over here where it's already running and we'll open up a console okay 
didn't like something. Oh, it's missing. Is GraphQL a dependency? Hmm, it might be actually. Let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe it might actually be a dependency. Let's try and install that. Or wait, GraphQL tag? Is it GraphQL or GraphQL tag? Uh, you do have to install GraphQL, says Kurt. That is missing in the doc. Okay, so npm install <laughs> just straight up GraphQL. Yes. Okay, got it. PRing it right now. There's Kurt. See, being he says he's the worst dev, but he's what the up, best. What up, Kurt? Well, the the live live updates. Look at that. Uh, okay, so now <laughs> when I npm run start, it should restart for us. Get it, and there's our data. Ah, right. here's our to dos. Wow. Look at that. Okay, so so if we if we talk about this from a pure utilitarian standpoint, that is literally all we need. Like if we were just trying to get data in and show it on a page, we we are done. That is that's it. That's all of of GraphQL. <laughs> like and, and like from a from a simplicity standpoint, that I mean it's pretty impressive. Like we we pulled that cache out here, and like we could have if we wanted to done that right in line. Yep. Um, so that's two lines of code. And then with an additional, what, five? One, two, three, four, five. And then the, the client call. So like, yeah, we're looking at like 20 lines of code, including the query, to get data from a server onto the screen. And that is yep. like, that's a that's dope. That's a big yeah. difference, right? It's pretty baller. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's better than writing and wrapping your own... Um, you know, Axios or fetch calls and mm -hmm. making services and doing all that stuff and knowing what the endpoints are. There's one endpoint and we connect to it. Yeah. We fetch everything from it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. So, um, but we can go further than that. We can, we can actually integrate with react here. Uh, we can. yeah. So I think I can, I just get rid of, or I'll leave this. Uh, yeah. So, so the next, I think the next logical thing to do uh, would be to wrap our entire app in a yes. provider. And we, we want to do that um, in a provider right because that puts it into context or that creates a context that means that we don't have to explicitly pass that client down through every layer of our components and props. Right. Yeah. And I think it's for, so there's, the, the great thing about Apollo client is that we don't really need to have access to this, this client object very often. Okay. Uh, there's, there's two APIs that we use for the most part because there's two types of operations we do. It's queries and mutations. Mm -hmm. so, so now we have this use query hook and we have this use mutation hook. Oh, snap. You built that in? Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm so excited. All right. Show me yeah, how to do yeah, this. Yeah. Let's do this. I All want right. uh, Apollo provider, right? Yes. All right, P Apollo provider, and then <laughs> thank you, Kurt. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I heard that one. Man. Yeah. So apparently Streamlabs is working, but uh, but my Stream Blitz is not because it's mm. it's uh, that's annoying, pesky, it's, it's killing me. All right, I'm gonna refresh it right now. Show me what you got. Where are you at? All right, let's try this again. Play, let's play a sound. Are you going to work? Are you going to cooperate? You just got blitz. I don't know. I don't know why we can't hear it. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, well, <laughs> so all right. So I've wrapped it yeah, in yeah. the the provider, and then I just need to add it the add the client. That's right. So client, and then pass in our client, and that's oh, it. Okay. Awesome. Sick. Okay, so we have we have our app hooked up with this client, and now we can go ahead and start. Uh, I think think maybe the next logical thing to do is to um, write a use query hook and get this data and maybe present it somehow inside of our app. Yeah, let's do it. So maybe what we can do is let's just drop. I mean, really, we can just drop all of this, right? So we can yeah. just say like. Um, like uh, uh, to do app in the jam stack using Apollo client v3. OK, 
Okay, that takes right. us out here. Good. What just went wrong? Something happened. Hold on. I think the stream hiccup. I want to make sure that it's not. Okay, it's fine. It was it was uh, the Twitch the Twitch UI and not my not the huh. actual stream. Okay, that's there's good. a lot of stuff to to you know, take into consideration when you're streaming. I just have to say, like, I appreciate it because <laughs> I tried running a simple stream with a couple of friends. Like, uh, like last week, I was like, hey, we're just going to chat about software design for a little bit. Everything went wrong. I was like, why <laughs> is this happening? I get it. Yeah, it's it's funny because, like, at, at this point, you know, I do a few of these a week. And so it's... Um, I don't notice a lot of the stuff that's happening, but the the joke that I always make is like every once you learn something, you immediately dismiss it as valuable, right? Like the guy who juggles mm. flaming chainsaws at the circus, for him it's not <laughs> dangerous or scary at all. He's just going to work. So yeah, it's, yeah. Like, you know, it's <laughs> that's just yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, okay, so I am now looking at a slightly modified to do app and maybe what we can do uh to to separate it out is like have a just a to do's component we can work in there and show how that works let's do it all yeah. right so i'm going to create a component called to do's and i'll use the the capital file name um to keep with convention here even though i don't like that and we'll get from react and then i'll create a component um to do's equals whatever and that's going to return like to do display to do's and then we'll just export default to do's if nice. I can spell it right all right so let's do that and then we'll get into our app and let's get this on the screen so i'm going to import um to do oh wait yeah to do's from to do's I guess I'll put that up above the, the CSS and then we aren't using that logo anymore. And then let's drop this right here, to-dos. Okay. Blessed. But now when we look over here, okay, that's, let me, let me fix <laughs> that like header size. Let's do like 200 pixels or something and that way it should, yeah, there we go, that's better. Um, so now we can, we have like a little bit of a header. We will show our to-dos here. And now I'm ready for you to show me what we should do. All right. Yes, fun time. All right. So first thing we could do in here is we can start with the uh, with with writing the query to okay. to get all the to dos. So and we fortunately already did that. Yeah. So here's our here's our query. Good. Got it. You grab that. And yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and create a variable for that. And I, the convention I like to use for writing queries uh, that I'm going to use in the app is I like to uppercase them. And um, what's it called? It's uh, snake case. The, snake case. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And so we'll say this to do's query like this. Yeah, that works. Yep. And then we'll need the GQL. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'll put this in, and then I'm going to have to import GQL from Apollo. OK. Nice. OK, so we've got the query. Now we want to uh, perform the actual query with this <laughs> query. Mm -hmm. So let's import use query from Apollo client. I'm so excited. This is all under one package. <laughs> like it's, this is yeah. so nice. Yeah, okay. it's clean. Um, okay, so now let's let's go ahead and say use query, and we'll pass in our uh, query that we wrote to do's query. Okay, so use query. Yep. Pass to that do's in. query, and then right. what's that going to give back? So it's going to give back an object with a bunch of stuff on it, but we can deconstruct it. It's going to have loading um, in this object. It's going to have data, and it's going to have error. Okay. And so we can start by just showing that off. This is my favorite debugging tip is to just JSON stringify oh, yeah. whatever. So we'll put in loading data 
error, and then we'll make it a little bit prettier with this null two, um, which will just add two spaces and kind of clean up the line breaks. And then when we go out and look at it, it's centered, so it looks super weird. But ah. <laughs> but we can see that it's not loading anymore. We didn't get an error, and I, I gotta fix that because otherwise we're not gonna be able to read anything. So let's go to app CSS, and we'll just turn off the. the There we go, that's better. Um, I started looking at CSS, I shouldn't have done this. We're all, <laughs> we're all gonna regret this. Um, we'll just do like T around it. There, that gives us some space, we can see what's going nice. on. Um, not the prettiest thing that we've ever built, but it's gonna function. So, uh, so now we can see like, loading came back empty, mm -hmm. or loading is false, uh, but if we reload, it's I bet it's just now. true for a hot second. Yeah. yeah, look look how fast it happens. But like you can you see that flicker before it gets the data. Um, so Milan, uh, we're not using Gatsby. Use static query is a a Gatsby feature. Um, so so this is uh, this is built into Apollo. So this is where like hooks get a little confusing here because hooks are a React feature. Mm -hmm. Different tools build hooks. And a lot of times the naming can be really similar because they're doing similar things. Gatsby will eventually launch a use query hook, um, but it, it, depending on what tool you're using, it's gonna be, you know, you, you import use query from Apollo, you're querying against Apollo. If you import a use static query from Gatsby, you're querying against Gatsby. So it's, it's important to know where your hooks came from to make sure you don't get uh, tangled up there. Yeah, I actually, I was, I was a little bit confused initially when I first learned about Gatsby and and Apollo and understanding that they're just two flavors of GraphQL. They're not exactly, you know, the same. They're they're implemented mm -hmm. differently, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if you wanted to get really wild with this too, you could always like use Apollo query or something like ah. that and then swap it out. I prefer to avoid that unless I absolutely have to use it because it's just a layer of indirection. But like, mm. if you were in a if you were in a file where you were using two imports with the same thing, that would be a way to work around that. Um, right. That's like you'll you'll see that when you like if you have a layout, and then you have to use a, a component library that has a layout, you might import layout as like base layout, and then your layout file is something else. Um, so that's you know, anyways, we're we're off we're off track here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes though. So at this point we are now using the React way of mm -hmm. running this query. And, and there's a couple things that are worth pointing out here that are just a breath of fresh air in the, in the landscape of, of like running code. So I wanna point out, we don't have to reference where the data comes from because Apollo client already has this in memory in this provider. So we tell uh, in index, we tell our whole app, everything inside of this app now knows that Apollo has a client that we can reference. And if we run a query inside of our, our to-dos, it's just gonna have a reference to that. Yeah. And this is like so powerful. Um, it, it, it really unlocks a lot of things <laughs> when, we, when we start talking about like, how quickly can I iterate or how quickly can I just prototype something? I don't have to drag around a reference to my utilities or to my, my rest endpoint or, or anything like that. It's, this is beautiful. Yes. Yes. The chef's kiss. It's the chef's kiss to be honest. Um, I like, so I I'm presenting a talk, uh, I think on Thursday this week and it's, it's about the, like just client side state management in general and how to do that with Apollo. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm, I focused on is this use query hook here. Mm -hmm. There's so much below this that happens. Oh yeah. There's so much below it. There's the data fetching. There's if we need to do, uh, you know, refetching, there's refetching there. There's also when we pull in this data from the, from uh, remote, like from the server, mm -hmm. this actually caches that data and stores Ooh. it in that client side cache. So if we want to request it again, it will get pulled from the client side cache instead. Nice. That's really nice. And that's it. why yeah. it's so dang fast when we're running this. I mean, aside from it being local, but it's uh it's it's being held in that in that's what the in memory cache is, right? That's right. 
Yeah, awesome. and it's it's cool because we didn't actually have to configure anything else on that in memory cache other than say, hey, we want to use it. That's so nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a an individual to do component so that we can add because what I want to do now is I want to be able to show these and I want to toggle them checked and not checked, right? Yeah. Um, and so let's uh, let's create our to do and that's going to be um, that's going to actually get some props, but we'll figure out what those are in a minute. It's funny to, to add to do's in a to do app. Maybe that's only funny to me. Oh, no, I get it. I was just thinking. <laughs> oh, no, I, I get, get it. It I... just wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the next step and then that hit me and it was like, boom, just bounced off for a sec. All right. So what we can do in here is we can uh, we can swap this out for something like um, let's go with one of these, give it a mm -hmm. React fragment, and then I'm going to give it a, an H1 of my to do's. And then we will set up a list. And I guess we can do this as an unordered list because why not? Um, and we'll say to do or data dot to do's. We need to do some catching for this, but um, we'll do a data to do's dot map. That'll give us a to do. And I'm going to return a to do with a to do of to do. <laughs> To do, to do, to do, to do. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes. And then I guess what we'll do here is we'll say like if loading, or no, we can even shortcut before that, right? So we can just say like um, if loading, we right. are going to return loading. And yep. if error, we'll return, I guess we'll just, we'll make this easy on ourselves and just say like error. Um, let me just answer by that. Actually. That's right. Work smart, not hard. Um, I guess we can make that look nice. So no two. Okay. So there's um, a question. Can you use the generated types from the schema on the client side as well here? Uh, yes, you can actually. Um, there is a package. I believe it's called. Uh, it's actually the Apollo, the Apollo client code gen. Um, oh, actually, no, there's there's a different one here. So I think the way that we do, like the way that I've done this, at least in, in Apollo um, client, is when I write my queries on the on the client side, I'll use the Apollo client code gen, and that will generate the client side types for those queries. So when I when I then go to you know work with that data, I'll have I'll have a strictly typed version of what's being returned. Um, I think the the question of if you want the the server side to be your single source of truth, um, and you want to rely on that as your types, I believe there's a way to do that. Uh, I think it's GraphQL Code Gen that um, that I think is most the most popular tool to use for that. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. I that's a whole area. Like, I don't use TypeScript. I'm not really a TypeScript. Uh, I just it it oh, hasn't yeah? it hasn't made sense to me yet. Like, I like I, I mean I don't disagree with it. It just it, it like I'm always I'm kind of always of a mind that like I love the autocomplete and yeah it doesn't seem it seems like more work than the autocomplete is worth is is kind of where I land on it. Yeah. Um. That of course is hyper like opinion time right so it's oh yeah it's certainly not a uh, not intended to be like you should you should listen to me on typescript just that's where i landed on it yeah i i really like typescript for um certain projects like mm. like on the back end it's like in order to do anything that's like um just not having interfaces is is just a huge disservice for doing anything um like any sort of backend server side programming with 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 some sort of design, yeah, um, and it's just hard with JavaScript. Um, you know, having to do things like duck typing or what? What it's do you just life? Yeah, sorry, I, I'm. Uh, I wh what? How would you mark this up? Like, I'm I'm sure I've done this before, and I'm trying to think of an accessible way to to mark this up that's not like nonsense. 
And I, I think it's, is this right? Like it would be like check oh. equals to do completed. Um, and then we'd give it an ID of like, um, what would it be? To do, and then we'd give it like a to do ID so that it's got a unique key, I think. And then we could do like a label HTML4. Oh man, I haven't done this in such a long time. I know, I, I like, I don't know how to code up a to-do <laughs> app. Um, let's see, like, mark complete. Is that right? Is this good? Okay, so I don't want the button, though. I want that out of there. Um, so now, right, like this, so this is not, the, it's bound, so we mm -hmm. can change it with, um, with the thing. But I think then what I can do as well is I can, Class name of like SR only. Um, and then we need to actually add that. So I have to Google for that. Um, SR only class. And there's like a copy paster thing. I can do this. I think this one's good. Nope, that's not what I want. This, I've seen this one before. This one's good. Um, so let's just grab. Here, and then I'll go in here to this, drop this at the bottom, and our label should disappear. It does, and I can drop this just in here, um, and here now. That's a that's a functioning enough to do app, right? Like I want to be able to yeah. click these. All good, great, happy. I'm I'm happy. Yep. Um, this is you know we'll win some we'll win some design awards I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll uh, we'll show up and uh, we'll get an award for that. And so React is yelling at us because we didn't add an on change handler, but that's okay. to be expected because we haven't figured out how we're going to handle changes yet. Yep. So that's I think the next thing that we want to figure out is what how do I tell this that when I click this button that we mm -hmm. want to change the um, the status to complete. Or, or not complete. I want to be able to toggle. Okay. Um, so, right. So, okay. So I think what we need to do now is we have a mutation for this. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the, uh, I think it's complete to do is the name of the mutation. Yeah, I think we wrote it here. Uh, yes. Okay, so we would want to hook this up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that looks right. OK, so this is fun. Um, so let's think how we should do this here. Well, yeah, we could do it in this file. Because because what, what I'm thinking is we have the to-do here. Mm -hmm. And this is going to have to use the, the to-do's ID. Yes. So it, it seems to me that it would make sense to co-locate it here, right? Like, that's that's how my brain is going with it. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that is a good thought pattern, I think. So we can we could definitely write the mutation in here. Okay. Um, so here's a question: Does this yeah. does this completion does it toggle, or do I need to like edit and invert the status of complete? Right. Okay. So yeah. So this that's a good question. Um, well, what do we want to do here? Do we want to toggle the to do, or do we want to? Um, because the mutation will will just complete the to do. And it will it will update the the cache, and then it will actually just be done. And there will yeah. be no actual toggle ability of that. But if we want to, you know, make this something that's uh, you know just on local state, there's also a way to do that with Apollo client as well. So I was thinking um, if I'm so the the way that I'm picturing this in my head mm -hmm. is that we when we mark it to do is complete, it stays yes. in the database. Yes. Um, and so I'll be able to show it as like crossed out and dimmed or something. Yep. But I might click that button by mistake and need to uncheck it, at mm. which point I would want it to, to go back to being uncompleted or like, you know, I might say, oh yeah, I'm done with getting started, but it turns out I'm not done. I need to put that <laughs> back on my list. Um, yeah. so, so my thought is that I, I would like to say, if it's completed, change the state to, to incomplete and vice versa. So basically just toggle the, the Boolean state of it on yeah. on click. So I 
think that might be an edit. Is that right? Um, well, the edit to do when when I initially created the server, you know, I, I assumed no one ever makes any mistakes. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so no one ever clicks a button uh, without, you know, that being the button button that they wanted to click. So the the edit to do, I believe it just takes in the text. Ah, so I get you. The okay. Text of the to -do. So I think what we might have wanted is either this edit to do mutation becomes more robust, where we can edit the completedness of it as well, um, or we also have like a an reverse or, or a toggle instead of complete to do, we have toggle to do as mm. a mutation. That's a yeah. So okay. So rather than get into a how to write a server thing, let's mm -hmm. just add the ability to complete, and then we'll move it to the bottom. Okay. Um, and, and we'll, we'll like toggling will be a, that's for another day. Right. So, yeah, definitely. so instead we will say complete to do. Yeah. And that's going to be GraphQL, And that need, that means that we need to import GraphQL from Apollo. Mm -hmm. okay. And inside of here, I'm going to use this complete to do query that I found blessed but this can't be hard coded so walk me through this what do i do next so we can i like to give a name to these things so we can say space complete to do and that'll be a pascal case complete to do um, oh like uh, what that's uh first cap too right yes okay and then and then we could pass in a id as a uh, parameter here so we give it an open, yep, and then we say ID. Is it an ID? Did you type this as an ID? I think it actually is an int. I think it's an int, actually, yeah. OK. And then we could pass that variable to where we have four. OK. Blessed. Got it. And that should be good. All right, so now we've got that. And so we're using a mutation here, so I can't use use query, right? No, we have the use mutation hook instead. Use mutation, all right. So if I use mutation, I'm going to pass in my complete to do. And what does this give us back? So this is going to give us back, uh, yeah, this is a little bit different. This is going to be an array. Oh, an array. And, and the first uh, item is going to be called mutate. And the second is going to be an object with data and error. OK. I think loading is also in here, too. Um, but I, I don't know if we're really going to need it for this example. OK. And so, so mm -hmm. mutate, I it, it, let, let me try to reverse engineer this, and you can tell me if I'm getting it right. So yeah. when, we, when we tee up a use mutation, we don't actually want to run it right away. What we're saying is we want this, this mutation available to us so yes. that we can use it when somebody clicks a button. And yes. so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, all right, Apollo, get ready, because at <laughs> some point, someone's going to click a button, and I need you to mutate some data. So yeah. that's what this is. This is like a readied mutation function with the, the query already. So Nailed it. does that mean that it is it aware of my variables? Like how, how do I get variables into it? So in the mutate, uh, that mutate object that we have, I believe it's actually a function that we get back uh -huh. and we can pass in the variables okay. to, the, to, to mutate there. And um, uh, let me, let me do it this way. I'm going to, so yeah. I'm going to create a function called handle change and that will get an event, but we're not going to use it. Um, and then down here, we will have our input handle change whenever it gets clicked. Um, and in here, we are going to mutate. And is the variables, like, do I need to call yes. it variables? Yes, you do. There you go. And it's another object. And then you pass that. OK. So this will actually send the mutation. And then what I get mm -hmm. back from that or wait, this is what I get back from that. Is that That's right. OK. So then I can do something like, um, I guess, if error will return, we'll just do a pre-dump. 
Um, and this will be cool because we can actually trigger this error by trying to complete something more than once because I'm not yeah. going to add that guard in right now. Um, and then the data that we get back is is kind of whatever. Um, yeah, but. I think we also return the... I think there's a way to also return the to-do that we complete as well. And I think it's a good idea to, to, to return the to-do because um, when we return a mutated object, um, the cache is smart enough to look at the ID of the object that just came back and say, oh, this is, I know what this is already because I have this cached and normalized. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update it in the cache automatically. So, so in our mutation response, if we also return uh, the to-do itself. Uh, let me check, let's see. So that is to-do yep. ID? Yep. And that's all you need? Yep, that's all we need. OK. So, so now what we're doing is we're basically saying, like, yo, cache, this is the ID that changed. And it, it'll auto map everything for us? I think we actually might want to return the um, completed and uh, what do you call it? Completed and, and text as well. So like map these, basically, like if they map. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And uh, yeah, sometimes some some might even put this in like a fragment or so, but we won't, we don't have to get. Yeah, I, I yeah. think as it gets more complex, that would make sense. But for this case, yeah. I think, you know, keeping everything co-located makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's cool. And so it that's going to end up here, right? I'm pretty sure it will, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna do a a dump of whatever's in that. Uh, we'll just pass in data null two, okay. And now I believe this is just gonna work, right? It looks like it has that magic. Let's see. Okay, let's let's try. Let's try. <laughs> Look at it go. That is beautiful. Mm. And now if I reload Love the that. page, it's checked. Woo! We have done Love it. That. I mean, like, and again, let's just like let's just take a second to look at how little overall work was required to build a, a legit functioning to-do app. So yeah. we we create our Apollo provider, which is a four-line Apollo client instantiation. We have our to-dos, we have a query, we've got this one use query call, <laughs> and then we map over whatever came back, right? So we, we run use query, and then we spit out that data here. And then in our to-do, we tee up a mutation that marks it as completed, and we handle a change whenever we like whenever someone clicks, we send that mutation with the current to do's ID and mm -hmm. that like, that's it, right? Like this is as someone who has been writing apps for a long time, the, the amount of like the amount of boilerplate that just disappeared with this approach yeah. is like pretty mind blowing. It really is. Um, like there's, Hey Peggy, you know, how you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, Peggy's in here. Yeah, the um, like there's there's so much like you've you've used Redux before, right? Mm -hmm. And like just even if we even just think about you know marshaling data after a uh, after you've changed it remotely and you want to marshal it and update the client side cache, mm -hmm. you know, just having to maintain those two structures and change what's coming back into the server and what's now on the client. That's a lot of work too. Ooh, you know what I want to try now? I want to yeah. see something. I want to see what happens if I have a different query, right? So I'm going to take this list of to-dos. I'm going to copy it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to call this other, whoops, this one. Other to-do list, right? And with this one, I'm not actually going to map out the to-do itself i'm just going to let to um we'll say like to do dot text is to do dot completed 
done or not done. Right? Cool. And so now we have a second list. And what I want to what I want to show with this is uh that like we've got a separate query, you know, all this stuff is is separate and I want to show the the kind of magic of of using this approach here. So let's go other to do list and let's drop it down here. Other to do list. All right. And so now this one is marked as done. This one's marked as not done. Okay, let's mark this one done. It updated there too, right? So without having to do the Redux thing where we'd have to like go up the chain and update the cache and then drop it back down and then react to that, like things just work. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so much there's so much there that's going on under the hood that it's uh yeah it's remarkable and um you know I think I think this is a great way to just get started and see see what you can do and see what you no longer have to do with with this mm -hmm. you know this this small set of tools yeah um, and it, really really cool like how how powerful this can be um, and so you know like. I think something that gets glossed over a little bit is the setup of the the server, but um, you know that's a that's a stream for another time to, yeah, to yeah. go into how to set one of those up. Um, but in terms of like interacting with data, holy crap, this feels like night and day from when I was trying to set this stuff up, you know, back five years ago. Um, what a what a like huge leap forward, and and the the ergonomics of this are really nice, like having everything packaged up inside of Apollo client like this. Yeah, yeah. That is slick. Like that feels really, really nice <laughs> to use. Yeah, it's it's so it's only like one thing you have to remember. It's all it's all right there. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, because it can get pretty cumbersome trying and, to pull things out from different packages all over the place. Yeah, and just having to remember, right? Like, is it do I pull this out of Apollo Boost or do I need to get Apollo link in like memory cache or whatever it was? And you know, there's all these yeah. different things that you would you would just kind of have to remember, and I found myself in the docs a lot. So knowing that it all comes out of one package, that in and of itself kind of feels like a, a huge level up in in ergonomics. Yeah. Um, hey, what's up, Trevor? Good to see you. Uh, so another thing that that I think, uh, uh, well, actually, okay, hold on, because we've got like fifteen minutes left on this on the clock, and I want to see is there anything else that you wanted to show? Because I feel like this is. Like we we covered a lot of ground, but we actually didn't show a lot of code, which is like <laughs> honestly the greatest thing about any good demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is oh man, there's there's so much in this API that's um or so much in this new version of uh, Apollo Client that's that that's new and that's really cool. Like for example, if we if we go over to the the cache uh, object that we created, yes. cache.js. There's nothing here. We didn't do anything. I know with it, right? it's beautiful. <laughs> so, like that's really that's really cool to know that we can just have a cache up and running, and it's it's going to store stuff when we ask for it, and it's going to first see if it's in the cache if we ask for it again, mm -hmm. and then and then give it to you instead of sending out a network request. Um, there's a new API in here that's that I think is you know it's actually probably my favorite out of all the new things. It's um it's called cache policies, okay. And what I think when um when we first started using Apollo Client two, or at least when I first started using Apollo Client two, there was this thing that people were doing in order to enable um you know local state, and that was local resolvers. And local resolvers where they looked a lot like what resolvers look like on the server side, and um. You know, while that's it's really cool to have a like a, a similar mental model for building things on the server side and building things on the client side, we found that it was a lot of code. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay. Um, we found that it was a lot of code with with local resolvers. So now, with um, these these cache policies, it's a lot more. It's it's a lot less code, and it's it's a little more declarative as to what it is that we want to do. So here we're actually looking whoa. at an example. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so hold up. Does this mean 
All right, all right, let me. Okay, I want to try something. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do something, and you, you tell me if this is all right. Hold on. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna say I want to do type policies. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm gonna go into my to do. Let me check the actual schema to make sure I go in the right place. Um, I've got my my to do schema in source. Where are you at? There you are. Uh, so my to do schema. Right, and I want to get into the completed. Yeah. So I'm going to say to do fields completed. Uh, actually, no, I want to get into the text. And then that is an object that gives me a helper called read. And does that give me just the field name or can I get the whole object? Oh, this will, I believe this will just give you the field name on, on this section here. Yeah. Okay. So I get the, I get the text and then I can do something like return, uh, text dot replace. Um, what was a word that we used? We use the word to do. And so let's replace to do with Corgi. <laughs> Right. And then if I come out here, it has already replaced all that. Yeah. Boom. That is, that is dope. Now, is there a way that I could, if I wanted to use this policy to say like, okay, so let's say I want to look at my to do's and if it's marked done, I want to make yeah. it all uppercase. Can I, can I say like, I want to modify the text based on the completed status? You can. And I think the way that that works is we need to we need to write some rules, not for the to do object. I think I think the way we would do it is for the <laughs> the query. Uh, Peggy, the 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 corgis are um, there's a, there's a whole like joke with the the corgis, but it's part of the party corgi Discord, which is where a lot of uh, streamers and content creators hang out. And then yeah, if you use twenty corgi emotes, we trigger a, a corgi parade. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So I cut you off. You said, uh, oh, if, no. if we were going to do, if we were going to do that, we wouldn't do it on the field. You said, I don't believe we would do it on the field. Um, yeah. So I believe if we wanted to do that, one way I could think about doing it is, um, so if we go back to the type policy again, we can, we're, we're, we're doing it on this to do type, right? Mm -hmm. If we were to. We wanted to change the way that uh, when we asked for this new to do, we could actually say query instead of to do. And then we can say when we ask for all to do's, we'll get the list of to do's coming in and then we can map over each of the to do's and then write whatever function it is we wanted to write. Oh, them. cool. Okay. So we, we'd be able to do that down in, we've got like field policies and all that stuff. So maybe, maybe not. Ah, so here is, oh yeah, not, not that one actually. Field reads and writes. Bang, it's dope. That's an example of uh, like, if you want to initialize state default. for something. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh wait, so, is, uh, this the, is this the thing? This oh, that's is... the argument. Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, there's um, it's like this is really cool. So th this this re this probably requires like deeper like let's get in and, and oh like, yeah for sure make a make a whole deep dive on cool things that you can do. But like that I, as someone who has written like cache updates for the the older versions of Apollo client, this mm. is a breath of fresh air. Like this is this is so nice um, to be able to just say like yeah do it do it the way that that I want. Um, in a way that makes sense to me. I'm going to get, oh, okay, I'm going to get to the name. Well, I get that name. I get to run a function on it, and that just modifies it in place. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, that's powerful. Like, imagine, you know, I'm screwing around with this, like, replace to do with Corgi, but, like, imagine you've got a legacy website where you rebrand. Like, th this happened. Like, Netlify rebranded from Bitballoon to Netlify. So oh, really? So we could just do that on the fly, like brand guardianship, uh, on the fly that that is really really powerful stuff um, that that you can just like build in you know?
You know, I like that's very, very cool. Yeah. This is um this is yeah, this is my favorite part of the uh the new APIs that came in. And let's say, for example, here you wanted to let's say you wanted to attach, you know, some local state as well. Like um if you wanted to filter your to-dos and maybe you wanted to only show to-dos that were complete or mm-hmm. only show the ones that weren't complete that you were still working on. Like kind of like a uh like you wanted to be able to toggle visibility to show active, done, you know. Sure. You could you could actually do that right here. Um, mm-hmm. You could you could cr- create a new type that doesn't exist in your remote schema. And you could create one that only exists on your client side here. Hold up, for real? Yes. Okay. How long does that take? Can I I want to see it? Can you show me? I can show it to you. Uh, let me just see. All right. So, all right, so what we could do here is we can, underneath uh, underneath to-dos, we would want to say query, and that would be a capital query object. Under to-do? Yes. Or like inside the to-do object, or is it separate? Separate. So this would be a new root type. Got it. Okay. So let me just see. Is that lined up properly? It's underneath type policies, but it's... Uh, it is the sibling of to-dos. Is that lined up correct? I think it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then uh, fields, you do the same thing. Say fields and then another object we could pass. Let's say, let's call it, um, I have it as visibility filter. So you call it something like that. Cool. And then we could pass it a, another object with a read function. And now there's a, there's a, there's one other API here that's really cool. So if we if we just expand this and we return nothing for a second here, we just return perhaps null. Uh, we need a way to we need a way to enable reactivity for this this variable that we're we're about to create, right? Mm-hmm. There is a new API um, called um, reactive variables. We can we can create these reactive variables that are containers to things that okay. when they change, it updates the cache or it lets the cache know that a change happened and it triggers a re-render. And, okay. Um, okay. So the so the way we could do this is if we go at the top of this file ab- above cache, we can say, actually no, uh, underneath cache rather, and we could say cache dot make var. Oh, down oh there. this will yeah down there. Cache dot make make var. And if we grab the value of that, that will just give us, uh, we could call it, we could say const uh, visibility filter variable or something is equal to cache.makefire. Okay. Right. So maybe we can also pass it like a default value. Let's give it, uh, let's say only show, you know, active to do's. So we could give it a string. Like that? Yeah. Okay. And then now if we return, if instead of returning null, we return this visibility filter. What we've done here is, uh, and then yes, var. So what we've done here is we've just, we've enabled reactivity for this, um, this new variable. So it's, it's not gonna be useful yet until we, we export this and we're able to run a query and grab this. So let's run, uh, or let's uh, let's say export uh, visibility filter var at the bottom of this as well, so we can get access to it in other places. Okay. All right. So um, let's go over to perhaps our main app into there, and let's see. We want to write a query where we can grab uh, this current visibility filter as well. So. Okay, I, we could probably just update this other to-do list to be, to be that. Right. Um, yes. So to grab that, we will need to say. Right. So we can say uh, visibility filter. And this will be this is the way that we've written written it as a as a field on this root query type. And is that just going to give us back something like that? Yes. Yep, since it's uh, since there's nothing inside of it, it's just a string. Okay. Um, we should be able to see it now. So if we okay. were to print out oh. the data. Yep. We'll just mount, we'll just dump the data, like so. Get back out here. And now we get. Oh, I got an error. 
cannot query field visibility filter. Do I need to stop and restart maybe? Um, oh, that's right. This is a, this is, this is not uh, remote. So this is only on the client side. So there's a directive that we actually need to put in front of this or after the visibility filter, okay. we say at client. Oh, so okay. this, so this is how we signal that this is something that's only to be resolved locally. Okay. Like Are we seeing it there? Return anything. Are we printing out just the to dos or? Uh, I'm printing out all of data. Hmm. Is in. I don't need to like stop and restart the server. It'll hot reload. Um. Yeah, it should hot reload. Hold on one second. Let's see where it is. Visibility filter. Yeah. Let me check that I didn't typo something because that's also entirely possible. Uh, in the cache. Also need to. Filter. So Ben's chiming in here. He says we also need to call the visibility filter variable in the read function. Ah, yes. So we need to invoke it. My bad. This is a. This is a. Uh, it returns a function. So let's invoke that right there. Here. Yes. Ah. Okay. That's right. That's right. Because the ah, API. Ah. There thing, it is. <laughs> yeah. Shout okay. out to shout out to Ben who wrote this, which is great. <laughs> so, I mean, but that's that's pretty cool. So like there there are um there was a, a comment from Milan about like not putting too much logic in the client side, but but one thing that I can see about this that's really exciting is like we could use this as a way to track client only state. So, you know, we just set this visibility filter. If we wrote a way to modify that, then I could have a toggle up here that, Correct. you know, I just like say show completed or hide completed um, that would toggle this visibility filter. And that is yeah. like, that's a pretty powerful thing that otherwise what I'm doing is I'm writing my own logic container. And so it's kind of a matter of like, okay, do I want to have data state and like a data cache that's coming from Apollo? and then an app state that is coming from somewhere else. Maybe that's Redux, maybe that's React Context, whatever. Um, and I think depending on your purposes, maybe you do and maybe you don't, but this is a really handy way to say, yeah, we're gonna keep app state in this, this like client only type and we yeah. can track things like whether or not the dropdown is open, whether or not the menu is expanded, whether or not, you know, whatever, stuff like that. That's slick, like that's really, really handy because I've often thought it would be nice to be able to do that, but I'm not going to send that to a database. That doesn't make any sense. So this yeah. kind of solves that need. Yeah, it's it's a very common need, right? We, we you know, when, when we're building client apps, we very often need some sort of local uh, state for things that aren't necessary on the server side, but we for sure need them on the client side. And um, I think that's what the the Apollo client team was thinking about with this new release is how do we make this experience a little bit better? Because beforehand, you, you mentioned actually you would want to change this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the API for these reactive variables is since we've exported this, changing it is as easy as just passing in a new value. So, so when I can, we... I can just like pull this in, like import, uh, what did we call this? Visibility filter there. Yep. Um, this is not where I'd want to do it, but I would be able to import that from cache. Yep. Okay, so let's actually put that in a file. Um, down here, other to-do list. We would just pull it in like so, and then mm -hmm. I could do something like, I don't know, let's just we'll hard code it. Visibility, whoops, not that, but this. And then we can put something like this in there. That's it. Look at it go. That is, I mean, that that really is nice. So then we could have like an on click that if I want to change my filter, I just drop this and then we've queried for it here and my whole state would, would change based on the value of this. So that is super powerful stuff. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, with that, we are we are out of time. So um, Khalil, where where should people go if they if they want to do more like what's what's a good next step for somebody if they want to keep digging definitely check out our our docs um they are they're improving every single day and um there is something else i put together here actually um i will drop a link actually i'll send it to you 
I put together an entire series of Apollo Client 3 examples. Ooh, so Yeah, that's what I want. So there's examples of, you know, how to do local state management. Um, here, I'll send it to you on Twitter real quickly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So there's a, yeah, there's a way to do, um, to do local state. There's a way to do remote state. Um, and there's also, there's also examples on how to use the new, we have some new advanced cache APIs as well, like cache.modify, cache.evict. So um, this is, I, th I think, is a, is a good resource to see the various different ways to build this to-do app uh, with the new APIs mm -hmm. and existing APIs and existing approaches. That's great. Okay. And so where should people go if they want to keep up with you uh, personally? Oh, yes. So I am... You know, I'm on Twitter at StemlerJS. Um, so if you follow me there, you can ping me anytime. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me there with the silly hat. <laughs> awesome. Um, so thank you, Khalil, so much. This was this was so this was awesome. This was a, a really great time. Um, I'm glad and so, I could make it. Uh, definitely, like, stay tuned. This is going to be a great week. We uh, tomorrow are going to have um, Chris. On Chris on code, he's going to join us. We're going to build a uh, a custom Jamstack API. We're going to stand up a bunch of stuff and you know deploy to DigitalOcean. We're going to get it deployed on Netlify. Show like a real full stack app. And then on Friday, we've got Thor from Stripe coming back. We're going to add Apple Pay and Google Pay to a Jamstack site. So like one click checkout, which is so cool. Um, and then I had my Thursday stream get canceled. Uh, and you know what? Why not keep the streak going? So. I'm going to set up something solo for, for Thursday. We'll, uh, we'll make that work. But um, with that, thank you all so, so much. As always, it is an absolute pleasure having you in the chat. Thank you for watching. Uh, Khalil, thank you again. And thank you. we will see you next time.